Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to begin today by acknowledging that this is our first subcommittee hearing after the passing of our dear colleague from Texas, Sheila Jackson Lee. Sheila was a fierce, fierce advocate for her constituents and an ardent defender of American civil rights, particularly voting rights. Her contributions to this subcommittee and to Congress and the country will be deeply missed. And of course, I wish that she were here today to push back on the lies, the innuendo, the half-truths, the speculation which form the basis for this hearing. This week, less than two months before the presidential election, House Republicans have threatened to shut down the government unless the Senate agrees to pass the anti-voter bill under consideration in this committee today. The SAVE Act would impose unnecessary obstacles upon the ability of American citizens to register and vote and would do real tangible harm to our democracy by preventing American citizens from voting by causing chaos at election bureaus, and by undermining faith in election results. This legislation, crafted with the help of election deniers and some of the architects of Project 2025, is part and parcel with Republicans' ongoing effort to undermine faith in our elections and to create unnecessary barriers to casting a vote, particularly by suppressing the votes of young Americans, communities of color, and language minorities. Former President Trump and his allies are once again using the same old playbook, spreading a non-citizen voter lie as part of a cynical campaign to undermine faith in our election systems. In 2016, the former president lied when he claimed that millions had voted illegally only in the states that he lost. They didn't. In 2020, he lied about the security and accuracy of mail-in ballots and claimed that voter fraud was the reason he lost that election. It wasn't. Now he's lying again, this time about non-citizen voting, in order to set the stage to challenge the 2024 election results if he loses. The repetition of those lies doesn't make them true, but it does make them propaganda. And the SAVE Act and this hearing are part of that propaganda campaign. We've seen time and time again, here in Congress and in state legislatures across the country, that bills combating non-citizen voting are really about politics, not policy. These bills are not rooted in reality, but are instead widely used to stoke anti-immigrant fear and hatred. Now they're being used to sow distrust in our elections as well. Because contrary to the claims you'll hear today, Non-citizen voting is extremely rare, and the so-called evidence that our colleagues and their witnesses cite has been repeatedly discredited with both large-scale study, large studies and even basic internet research. But the lack of a rational or evidentiary basis for this legislation is far from the only serious problem with the SAVE Act. This bill would be a disaster for eligible American voters and lead to the disenfranchisement of hundreds of thousands of American citizens. We know that bills like the SAVE Act, which require onerous and unnecessary proof of identity or citizenship to vote or register, are more likely to suppress the votes of American citizens, especially in communities of color and those with many recently naturalized citizens, more likely to do that than to prevent the infinitesimally small number of non-citizens who might mistakenly cast a ballot. We've seen the dangers of these types of laws in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, where I reside, and elsewhere. In 2012, the Pennsylvania legislature passed an owner's voter ID law to combat the equally non-existent problem of in-person voter fraud. That law's requirements would have disproportionately burdened low-income, minority, elderly, military, and disabled voters. It would have disenfranchised over half a million eligible voters who were unable to easily obtain the limited forms of ID that were required. Civil rights advocates challenged that law on behalf of Pennsylvania voters and won. Troublingly, the SAVE Act goes even further than that state law, including requirements to register for a federal election that would burden every eligible American voter, but especially those that don't have ready access to documents like a passport, specialized real ID, or a birth certificate and it would impose additional burdens upon already registered voters who simply want to change their address 
or party affiliation. It would require states to use unreliable database information to verify citizenship. And election officials would be charged with purging suspected non-citizens from voter rolls in a way that inevitably targets naturalized American citizens who are eligible voters. That's something we've already seen happen in states like Alabama, Texas, and some of the others that the chairman mentioned. The SAVE Act, if it were to become law, would take effect immediately in the days immediately preceding the 2024 election, throwing states' voter registration processes into chaos. And it would provide even more opportunities for extremists to waste time and taxpayer dollars with baseless lawsuits and frivolous election challenges. So here's the truth. Voters are already required to declare their U.S. citizens under penalty of law. That's because every state has pro prohibited non-citizen voting in federal elections since the 1920s, and it's been a federal crime for nearly 30 years. Because it's already illegal for non-citizens to vote and register in federal elections, doing so could result in significant jail time and deporta deportation. It defies common sense that large numbers of non-citizens would intentionally risk these dire consequences to vote. And think about this. The criminal act of non-citizen registration and voting, by its nature, creates a long paper trail of registration forms with addresses, ballots, paper ballots, et cetera. Every reliable study ever done on this topic has determined that non-citizen voting in state and federal elections is vanishingly rare and usually the result of mistake. One such study conducted by the Brennan Center for Justice using data from the 2016 election found that out of 23.5 million votes cast in jurisdictions with high non-citizen populations, election officials found only 30 votes were cast by suspected, but not even proven, non-citizens. That's one ten thousandth of a percent of the votes cast. So the facts simply don't justify the hysteria or the threat to American citizens' franchise. Even the former chairman of this subcommittee, Speaker Mike Johnson, has admitted that claims of non-citizen voting in federal elections were not provable. The bottom line is the SAVE Act won't prevent non-citizens from voting in U.S. elections because they don't, but it will stop Americans from voting, and that's unacceptable. Look, the reason we're having this hearing now is that Congress must fund the government by September 30th to avoid a shutdown. House Republicans have shown by their failure to engage in good faith budget negotiations or pass the number of appropriation bills that need to be done, they aren't really interested in the basic duties of governance, but they do want to stay in power and to gain power in the Senate and in the White House. That's why they're supporting this voter suppression bill instead of working to fund the government over the next 20 days. So here we are, holding this farce of a hearing on a dangerous bill targeting a non-existent problem, a bill that's already passed the Republican-led House but is a total non-starter in the Senate. Rather than making it harder for American citizens to vote, we should be protecting and expanding access to the ballot box by passing bills like the John R. Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. And it's deeply disappointing that Republicans have chosen instead to spend this subcommittee's time appeasing the former president and extremist election deniers ahead of November. Democrats, however, intend to keep working to ensure that every eligible citizen will cast their vote and have their voices heard, because that's what the American people deserve. I yield back.